Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Declare it to the distant lands. Our Savior will come. You need no longer fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins before God, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord, our God. As we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when He comes and knocks, He may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in His praise. Who lives and reigns with you, in unity with the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not ra raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, 
the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, we started a new liturgical year, Advent, in its first season. Advent is a quiet, reflective season in our church liturgical calendar because it reminds us that we live in between the time of the first coming of Jesus in the little town of Bethlehem and the second coming of Jesus Christ in majesty at the end of time. And so this historical and spiritual period of being in between these two comings gives us the chance to be attentive in noticing the signs or previews provided us by the Advent readings regarding the time of the return of the Messiah. Parousia. And these weekly Advent readings enable us, hopefully, to capture some insights into the future time, the second coming, which we are eagerly waiting and we are praying for. Today's gospel is not just a story about the faith of the centurion who appealed to Jesus for help on behalf 
of his paralyzed and dreadfully suffering servant. And Jesus in the story was impressed by the faith of this humble centurion who, despite his authority, submitted himself to the Lord and appealed on behalf of his servant. And this, we know, led to the confession of faith which amazed Jesus. I tell you, he said, I have not found such faith in no one in Israel. Imagine Jesus saying those words about you. But what did the centurion do to impress the Lord? First, when Jesus volunteered to come to his house to cure his sick servant, he humbly told the Lord that he was not worthy to have him enter his house. It was not because he did not, he did not want to receive him. It was because he knew he was not entitled to such a visit from the Lord. It was a humble confession of his sins that made him unworthy of the Lord's visit. Second, his faith told him that Jesus could actually heal his servant even from a distance. It was an expression of confidence, confidence in the authority of the Lord. He knew this from his understanding of how a person of authority works in this world. They command and the subordinates follow. He knew that everything is under the command of the Lord. If he wished the sickness would leave his servant, it would happen. In other words, it was the faith of the centurion. Friends, sometimes we are weak in this aspect of humility, in this aspect of total confidence in the Lord. There are times when we act as if we are in charge and everything is within our control. Everything is within our power, our capacity. We turn in on ourselves rather than turn to God. We push ourselves to the limit so much that when things do not happen in the way we want them to be, we become anxious, we become disappointed, and even angry or burned out. Advent reminds us of the first reading, I say as a vision of unity. It is not one man's dream. It is, it is a search that occupies all people. If we can manage to express in concrete some parts of this unity, then Christmas becomes more a faith experience for us and not just a holiday that we observe every year.
we all stand for the prayers of the faithful. The pagan centurion knew that he could not receive Jesus in his house, but he believed in the power of Jesus to help his servant. Let us ask the Lord for the gift of faith that sustains us amid the difficulties and troubles of life. And we say, Come and save us, Lord our God. Come, Come and save, save us, Lord our God. That all nations of the earth may walk in the Lord's light and follow the path that leads to peace, we pray. Come and save us, Lord our God. That the church may ever become the house of the Father, where there is a place for everyone who knocks at its door, we pray. Come and save us, Lord our God. That like the centurion, may we show our love and concern for those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, we pray. Come and save us, Lord our God. That peace and harmony may visit the hearts and homes of families this season of Advent, we pray. Come and save us, Lord our God. That our departed relatives and friends may recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven, we pray. Come and save us, Lord our God. God, our Father, as we await for the coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, give us peace that sustains us amid the uncertainties of life. May we hold on to, this, to his word that endures forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming 
the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy holy holy, holy lord god of god hosts host. heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth are full of your, of your glory, glory. Hosanna in the, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord, and profess, and profess your, your resurrection until, until you, you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Patricia, Bishop, and all the clergy, we also remember our brothers and sisters, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have Amen. mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world, have Amen. mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of, God, of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof. But, but only say, say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Come, O Lord, visit us in peace, that we may rejoice before you with a blameless heart.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.